Welcome to Wednesday, April the 14th. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School in Saginaw, Michigan, celebrating God's Holy Word with you today in our time of devotion. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. The following verses from Matthew 28, beginning at verse 11, describe what we could call the greatest cover-up of all time. Some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money, and they did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Our American culture is fascinated by cover-ups and conspiracy theories. Did President Roosevelt support foreign policies, forcing Japan to attack the Pacific Fleet on December 7, 1941? What really takes place at Area 51? Are extraterrestrial beings living among us today? Was Lee Harvey Oswald the lone assassin of President Kennedy? Did the United States government conceal evidence and intelligence that could have prevented the 9-11 attacks? There are tens of thousands of websites on the internet that focus on cover-ups and conspiracies. But this account from Matthew 28, 11 to 15, is a conspiracy of the highest order. A conspiracy to cover up the truth of the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. This was a conspiracy that involved plotting, scheming, hush money, and lies in order to conceal the truth, the truth revealed in the inspired, inerrant Word of God, the truth revealed in the evidence testimony of eyewitnesses that numbered hundreds after Jesus rose, but the truth that continues to lead us to celebrate each and every day, Christ has risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, as sad as that first cover-up was, what is more disappointing is the cover-up that continues today. Many Christians gather for a worship service on Easter Sunday, but many Christians don't continue that celebration of Easter. Many practices and traditions have now kind of overshadowed that one worship opportunity and for the days and maybe days to follow, what else conspires to conceal the real meaning of Easter? The Easter bunny, Easter baskets, Easter egg hunts, family visits, vacations, special dinners. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with any of those traditions, but they seem to overshadow the only reason we have Easter. All of those practices don't reflect on Jesus. They don't reflect on the fact Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. They might not be intentional conspiracies to avoid the truth of Easter, but none of those are the centerpiece. Jesus is the centerpiece. His resurrection must remain our most important message on Easter, through the season of Easter, and all of our lives. Easter is one of the closing chapters in the ministry of Jesus that allows us to remember and celebrate, first, how God sent his one and only Son to live a perfect life under the law for us, how God the Father sent his Son to teach us the will and ways of our Father in heaven. How God the Father sent his son Jesus, who humbled himself, endured unimaginable suffering and death on a cross for our sins. And how God raised his son from the grave to give all believers in Jesus hope for heaven and our own physical resurrection. Easter is always, it is only, about the resurrection of Jesus from the grave, a gospel message of the highest order 
the most important truth we can share at this time of year. Because of these Easter truths, because Jesus is risen and living, we can know him each and every day. Because of Jesus' own words and testimony of the eyewitnesses, we know Jesus is exactly who Jesus says he is. And because God raised his son from the dead, every believer in Jesus can live each day with the absolute hope and confidence of their own physical resurrection from the grave when Jesus returns. To wrap up today's devotion and to set up this coming Friday's devotion, hear these words recorded in 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 20. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, then how can some of you say there's no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who all fall have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. We'll address those words from 1 Corinthians 15 in our devotion on Friday the 16th. Let us pray. Loving Father, we truly live in frightening times. Most of the news we hear focuses on evil, violence, discord, suffering and death. We're surrounded by all kinds of cover-ups and conspiracy theories. But if we only open our eyes and ears to receive this news each day, then we can only lose hope. But we have another direction we can turn. We can turn to you. We can turn to your holy word for comfort and strength and hope. We can turn to your church and gather with other believers in services that only praise your name and the life of Jesus, our risen living Savior. We can confess our sins daily to you and be assured of your forgiveness. We can celebrate the good news that nothing can separate us from your love and your victory won by Jesus on the cross and the empty grave. Truly, Jesus is the only source of lasting hope for our earthly lives, for he is our ever-present help in trouble. Thank you, Father, for hearing the prayer we have offered. Now hear the prayer we offer as our risen, living Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.